All right. Well, uh, happy Monday, and um, and we're uh, um, yeah, it's it's week seven. <laughs> So, uh, so we're, wrap, we're just wrapping things up, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, I guess about four weeks remaining in the quarter. Um, so, yeah, um, I thought uh, this week we'd take a look at some object-oriented stuff. And um, uh, this is a pretty big lecture. I don't know if we'll get through the whole of it. So um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it and, uh, and we'll see how much we cover. We'll probably have to um, we'll probably spend the entire week on the uh, on the topic of object oriented programming. Um, you know, there's a bit of a question. You know, how much object oriented programming do you have to actually do as a data scientist or a data analyst? And the answer is probably you don't have to do a ton of kind of creating your own, you know, object classes and creating your own methods. You probably don't have to write a, a lot of the stuff, but chances are you will uh, eventually read someone else's script, read someone else's code, and they will have some object-oriented things in there. And uh, and if you're not familiar with how Python handles object-oriented stuff, it can be you know it can be difficult trying to uh, to read other people's code. So um, so I think it I think it's a good topic to cover uh, a lot of stuff in Python is done from an object-oriented kind of design and perspective. So, um, so we'll, we'll take a look at that. Okay. All right. Uh, and this, uh, this comes from the, uh, the textbook Think Python. So we're going back to, uh, to that textbook. I know we kind of took a break from it when we covered uh, NumPy and Pandas and um, you know, the, the visualization stuff. But uh, Think Python kind of covers the kind of the core um, programming um, topics in Python, and um, and so we'll uh, we'll go back to that uh, textbook. Okay, and so um, you know uh, it starts off kind of just describing you know how Python has a lot of built-in types, and now you know we we can do ob object-oriented stuff when we want to define our own types. Okay, and so we're going to just uh, start by defining a very kind of simple um, user-defined type that we'll call point. And basically it's just going to represent a point in two-dimensional space, basically holding uh, an X value and a Y value, right? And there's a few ways we could go about doing this with um, you know, the things that we've learned, right? We could just store a value for X and a value for Y. We could store them as a tuple, uh, which probably makes a lot of sense. Or we could try creating kind of this new class, um, and uh, and that's what we'll take a look at here. Okay, and so um, so we're going to uh, define our new types of things called classes. And when you create a class, the convention is to use a capital letter to capitalize the new class that you are using. Okay, and this is done with the keyword class, just kind of like you know you define a function using uh, def or define and you'll define a new class using class, okay? And so here we define a class, we define a class point, okay? Capital P-O-I-N-T colon, and that's pretty much all you need. You, you gotta write something afterwards. Um, and so this is just called a doc string, okay? This is a doc string where um, we just kind of describe what this class is going to do, okay? But this actually having a doc string isn't even necessary if, if you have a method or if you have an object stored inside the class um, then that's fine but right now um, we can just kind of define the simplest type of class which will just or as you know the simplest thing that this point class can be which is basically nothing okay but it's just kind of a, a label uh, for which we're going to define you know maybe like a box or something uh, that, that we will call an object, okay? And so here, this is what we call a doc string. And this is just, um, if somebody says like, uh, you know, help, you know, asks for help on what a point is, it's gonna kind of give you back a description of what the, um, of what the thing is, okay? So, um, and doc strings are held using kind of this, this triple quote thing, okay? You use three quotes in a row and, uh, you know, open and close with three quotes and that, that's used to kind of explain what it is, right? And, and right now at this point in time, 
there's nothing else inside the description or the uh, definition of the point class, okay? But now that we have this, we can start using it, okay? So this this is now created um, an object, uh, an object class, a, a class object called point, right? And if you say, well, what is point, okay? It's gonna come back and it's gonna call it class. And it's gonna call, uh, have this double underscore, double under or dunder, dunder main dunder, okay? And, uh, and basically, um, because we've defined the point in, in basically what's the global environment of Python, um, um, that which is known as kind of the main, the main header, um, this is this is what we have here, okay? So the kind of the full name of it, it would be the double underscore main point, okay? But basically this is just a class definition. Right now the class definition is very empty, um, but we've defined a certain class of objects, okay? And, uh, and now we can go about storing values in it, okay? So first we're going to just, uh, or, or we can use it to kind of define other objects, okay? And so to create an instance, okay? You're going to create an instance of point by calling point with parentheses. So it's almost like you're calling a function point, but it's not a function, it's a class definition. And so what this will do by calling point with parentheses, this is going to kind of manufacture an instance of this class object. And right now the class definition is just completely empty, right? Um, and so this will, this will create um, an object called blank, and it's gonna have kind of the, the class definition, right? And so now if we say, well, what is blank? Blank is gonna be, it's, it's basically, you know, a, a version, you know, an instance of the point object located at this location in memory, okay? Um, and that, that's all it's saying, okay? So um, this is what it is, a reference to a point object, which we've called blank, okay? And it tells us, you know, it belongs to uh, the class point and it's stored at this location of memory. So, so right now, all we've done is we've created an instance of this class. Okay, so now that we have an instance of the class and it's called blank, we can, um, we can assign values to it, okay? So we've got, um, so here, I can use dot notation and I can say blank dot X, right? So blank is uh, the point class. We never said what X is, okay? This is not part of the class definition, but the fact that, um, the fact that I'm using a dot X here um, just kind of creates, just on the fly, Python says, okay, you are creating an attribute Okay, you're creating an attribute called X inside that object blank. Okay, and here we're going to say blank.x takes on the value three, blank.y takes on the value four, and, uh, and these are now attributes that we've created on the fly um, just, by, um, just by kind of uh, using this, this notation here. Okay, and uh, you know, it, the, this notation here using the dot is a way to kind of um, declare attributes within within an object, right? And so, you know, we had like the uh, the math module earlier, and uh, and you can kind of reference values inside values or functions inside the math module by calling math.py or whatever whatever it is, right? And so in this case, um, we're we're assigning values to elements in the object, and these these would be called attributes. Okay, and then so if we wanted to kind of reference these things. We can just kind of say, well, what is uh, what's the value of the attribute y inside the object blank? So we have blank dot y, and that has the value four point oh. And uh, and here we can take that value blank dot x, and we can assign it to an object x in the global environment, or you know, in the top level main. And we could say, okay, well, what is the value of x? And x, you know, has that value three point oh. Okay. And so um, blank blank dot x. Um, oops. Um, so you know once we've done that, okay, 
this this x you know is not um is not tied to this okay all we've done is we've we've called we've, we've asked what is the the value of the attribute blank.x and we've assigned that to x okay and so here x takes on the value three okay now if if later i change the attribute blank.x to say to equal say a value like 5.0 okay um that's not going to affect the value x okay because up here because this this value of x you know just all we're doing is we're not assigning the attribute blank.x to the name x what we're doing is we're taking the value stored in blank.x which is 3.0 and we're assigning it to x okay and so those things are separate here i can change the uh, the value of blank.x to 5.0 and and x remains unchanged to be 3.0 okay and and so you know these these values in dot notation these are basically kind of like variables but they're stored inside this object blank okay so we've created you know we've created an object an instance of the point class uh called blank and inside of that there's values and we can just kind of reference the uh, the values in there and so if you recall um you know the uh string um the the notation to kind of insert values right so here we have in, uh, we're going to take values and we're going to insert it into um a string okay so here it's going to kind of combine string elements you know we've got the parentheses the comma the space and the parentheses and then we've got percent g percent g and we give it a tuple of numeric values so i have um, blank x and blank y and then it returns back kind of a string with the numbers inside blank x and uh, uh with the values of x and y stored inside blank and so you know this this looks like a, a coordinate point you know five comma four here okay and so just just like that we can do all of this and then so now we can define a maybe we want to create a function all right and so this this is going to be um we're going to create a function called print point okay and basically we're going to do this except um, inside print point we're going to pass it some object p and and we're expecting p to be uh basically a point uh an instance of the point where it's going to have these attributes p dot x and p dot y obviously if the if this object p that we pass does not have p dot x or p dot y you know we're going to run into an error okay but but this is kind of simple enough we can call a uh, print print point on on blank and it will basically run this right it's going to find the value in blank x blank y put that inside this thing and print that out okay so if i say print point blank this gets printed out here So far, so good. Okay, great. All right. So let's just say we want to um, make something just a tiny bit more complicated. Okay. And so we're going to design a class that's going to represent a rectangle. Okay. And so um, as far as defining a rectangle, okay, one is you could specify one corner or maybe the center or whatever it wants, okay? Whatever you want. And then we're gonna specify the width and the height of the rectangle, okay? And another way to define a rectangle is you kind of pick two opposite corners and we'll do that, okay? Um, here we'll just, um, we'll go with the first option um, just because it's a little bit easier. And we're gonna kind of just assume that the uh, you know the corner that we use to define the rectangle is going to be you know we'll pick arbitrarily pick one of these things okay and so again all I'm doing is I'm just creating kind of an empty container at this point right and um, and you might be wondering like well when are we going to define a thing where actually the the values are stored inside the the thing and that that will come much much later okay we'll we'll get there eventually but right now we're going to just kind of start off all of our class definitions as just kind of empty things right now with just a doc string okay doc strings when they're um when you have them with triple quotes they can be multi-line okay so here this is going to be represents a rectangle and we're going to also list off kind of the attributes the width 
the height and uh, and you know the location of a corner. Okay, and the corner is going to be represented with uh, an object of the point class. Okay, and so um, so right now the point class has an x and a y, and we're going to use a point object for the corner. Okay, and again the class point currently its definition is just is, is very empty as well, um, but that's okay. Okay, and so here we're going to create an instance of the rectangle object, okay, by, by using the parentheses to kind of call it, and we're going to just call this, we're going to create an object called box, and then we'll take box.width, set it equal to 100, box.height, set it equal to 200, and then for box.corner, we're going to create an instance of the point object, and then inside the corner, we're going to have two attributes, and we'll have box.corner.x, box.corner.y. Okay. Does the does the hierarchy here work okay as far as how, you know how how this is all working? Okay. And again, right now, I could have called any of these things. I could have called this box.w, box.h, box.house, you know, whatever I want. Because right now, there's no kind of definition as far as um, there's no kind of checks as far as the class definition goes that says, you know, um, when we create a box object, it's, um, it, it's only allowed to have these attributes, that, that the attribute has to be called width or the attribute has to be called height or something like that, okay? We are, um, this is kind of, um, there's, no, there's no kind of rules here. And generally you, uh, later on, we will define methods for someone to kind of interact with the objects. And the, and the methods will be functions that kind of check to make sure uh, well, um, that the inputs make sense and things like that, okay? Right now, we're kind of going straight into the, um, the class itself and, and manipulating things. So there's no um, kind of gatekeeper right now that says, you know, you're only allowed to men create an attribute called width or an attribute called height. Uh, we could have we could have called these things anything we want. Okay. And here we're creating corner to be an instance of point. And again, point doesn't have any kind of gatekeeping um, functions that say, you know, it has to be an X and it has to be a Y. Right now we're just doing this and you know we're doing it in a way that makes sense. So as to avoid problems later, but there's right again, there's no check. Okay. Let me go ahead and give you your first view quiz answer for today. Today's first view quiz answer is the letter A. A as an apple. A as an apple will be our first view quiz answer. Okay. Um, so, you know, let's just go ahead and, uh, and keep going with this. And let's say we want to create a function that's going to be like, find the center, all right, of the, uh, the rectangle, right? So it's going to, it's going to, um, we're going to create a, we give the, uh, this function find center and an object of the rectangle class. And then it's going to return a point which has the uh, coordinates of the center, okay? And so we're gonna assume that, uh, that the point, the corner of the rectangle will be kind of our, our lower left corner, okay? And, um, and, and then we will say the center of the rectangle is gonna be here, okay? And so we're going to say, um, we're going to define a function called find center, and the center object is going to be given, um, or the cent this find center function is going to be an uh, given an object of class rectangle, and what it's going to do is it's going to return object p. Object p is going to be an instance of the point class, which uh, which we do here, and we're going to say p dot x. The uh, the location of x in point is going to be the um, the x corner, the rectangle to x plus half of the width, and the, um, the, the y value plus half of the height, okay? And we're going to assign those to p dot x and p dot y, and it's going to return p. Okay, so back here we defined, um, here we created box manually, and we said the box width is 100 and the box height is 200, so we've got kind of a 100, we've got a tall rectangle, uh, 100 uh, width, 200 height, okay? And its corner is gonna be at the origin. And so when we put that box into the 
the function find center, it's going to say, okay, well, um, if the corner is at the origin and the width is 100, its x coordinate is going to be 50 and its height is going to be, you know, or y coordinate is going to be 100, right? So right now, center is going to be, um, we're going to say find center of the box. And okay, we ask, well, what is center? And it's going to be an instance of the point class located at this location in memory. And we could say, all right, we'll print that out. And we've defined um, the function print point. And it says, okay, the location of the center is 50 comma 100. Okay. And again, if, if anything, um, you're like, where did, where did this come from? Or something like that, don't hesitate to ask, right? So we've defined print point in a way, way back here. Um, when we said, we're, you know, we're gonna just take some uh, object of the print uh, point class, and we're gonna print out the um, X and Y coordinates of, of print point, okay? So these are all kind of functions as, um, as we've defined them, okay? Okay, um, the, these objects, the, the object-oriented stuff, when you define a class and you create an object, those objects are all mutable, okay? So you can kind of change the state by you know, making an assignment to any one of these attributes, right? So here, currently our box has a width of 100. And we could just, if we wanted to, we could just say, all right, the, let's add 50 to the width. We're gonna take box width and say box width, take that and add 50, take the height and add 100, right? So we started off with a box width of 100 and a height of 200. Now we're gonna make a box width of 150 and a height of 300, okay? So the box width is now 150, and the box height, which used to be 200, box height is now gonna be 300, okay? So it's still kind of a uh, twice as tall as wide rectangle, still maintains that ratio, but the width is now 150, and the height is now 300, okay? If you wanted to, you can um, write a function that's going to modify the object, okay? And so here, this function doesn't actually return an object. It just, it takes the rectangle, right? So here, we're gonna create a function called grow the rectangle. Grow the rectangle takes in a rectangle object and it takes in three ar arguments. And right now those arguments will be a rectangle object, a delta for the width and a delta for the height, how much we're gonna change the width, how much we're gonna change the height, okay? And this function, as it's written, doesn't return an object. It just does rectangle.width and increase that by the delta width, rectangle.height and increase that by doing delta height, right? And the plus equals is equivalent to uh, this kind of operation. It's just taking its current value and adding something to it and reassigning it, okay? So currently box width and box height are 150 and 300. I can take grow rectangle box and add uh, another 50 and another 100 to the um, to its width and height, okay? And I can ask again, what is box width and box height? And now those values have been modified to be 200 and 400, okay? Grow rectangle itself doesn't return any object, okay? Um, there's, there's no return statement, no return keyword here. So, uh, so nothing gets returned. But it does, just the fact that these, these lines of code um, get executed, um, it does modify you know, whatever rectangle we pass to it, okay? And so box right now is our instance of rectangle where it used to have a width of 150 and a height of 300, and now it has a width of 200 and a height of 400, okay? So, um, so this just kind of summarizes what we did. Okay, um, and so when you, um, because these objects are mutable, all right, um, sometimes code can be difficult to read, okay, especially when you have a function that modifies the objects without necessarily reporting or printing, printing anything onto the screen. So it, it can be easy to miss that this function is actually modifying the size of the rectangle, right? If, you, you would only be aware that this function is modifying the rectangle if, um, 
well, one kind of by the name of the function. And so this is why it's important to name your functions well. So you can kind of, by the name of the function, identify functions that modify objects or by being familiar with the code itself, right? So if you write your own code and you're actively working on it, you might be able to keep these things in mind. But a lot of times you'll revisit code that you've written like a couple months ago and, uh, and you won't be in the same state of, you know, frame of reference. And so um, you kind of have to relearn things. And so hopefully you've, you've given your function good names rather than just like function F or function G where you really have no idea what's happening, okay? Um, so here, function grow rectangle, it sounds like it's gonna modify the rectangle, okay? Um, anyway, uh, what we can do, we can use the copy function or the copy module to duplicate uh, objects, okay? But it's important to keep in mind that when you create copies, it's gonna create shallow copies uh, unless you call deep copy, right? So here, just, just for um, an example, we're going to define um, P1 to be an example of a point, point one, and it's going to have its X and Y coordinates at three, three, four. Right? And so we're going to call copy and we're going to ask, create a copy of P1. Okay, and P2 is going to be an object of P1. Okay, and so when we say, well, what is, uh, what's P1? P1 has coordinates at three, four. P2 has coordinates at three, four, okay? And we can say, is P1 the same as P2? And, uh, and when you do this with objects, um, this, will, this will test do a test for equality and say, are they the same object, okay? And because they're, they're different objects, they're, it's gonna come back and say, you know, these, these are, um, they're different, okay? Uh, it's not a test for equality like three, is 3.0 equal to 3.0, okay? Um, it's, it's asking, is this object, object P1, is that the same as the object P2? And you can do equals, equals, or is, and, uh, and they are not the same instance, right? If you ask, what is P1 and what is P2? They're both instances of the point class, okay? But you can see that their location in memory, this, this location as, is at 999C8, and this, this location is at, Five three seven zero eight. All right. So these are at different locations in memory. They are different objects. Okay. okay. However, one thing is that um, that we have what we call shallow um, shallow copies. When you by default we're going to create shallow copies. Okay. So so here we have um, an instance of a rectangle called box. Right. And so box contains two values, box width and box height. Okay, and those are, those are uh, numeric values, floating point values. And it ha also has an object called corner, right? So um, box.corner is an instance of point, okay? And, uh, and right now the box corner is at zero, zero. So box corner X is at zero, box corner Y is at zero. So let's say I go ahead and make a copy of box, right? So I'm gonna call copy.copy .copy box. We're gonna call this box two, okay? Box two is not the same thing as box one, okay? Or box, right? So this, it is a copy. It's a different instance of the rectangle object, okay? But it, the object corner, right? So inside of box, corner is a point object that reference to this, this instance of the object at this location in memory remains the same, okay? So the reference to the corner gets, remains unchanged. So if we say, is the corner of box two the same as the corner of box, that actually comes back to be true because it's a shallow copy. So any objects nested inside of other objects, only references to those objects um, get copied. All right, not, it doesn't actually generate a second copy here. So if you say, well, what's, what's the object at box two corn, uh, of box two corner? That's gonna be the point object located at this location memory. What's the um, lo um, object at box corner? And it's the exact same memory location, right? Because this is the exact same object. It's the exact same object. So it's, it's kind of like, 
I don't know, you have a club <laughs> and, um, and you have, uh, you know, the, I don't know, the president of the club is, you know, some person. And then they say, you know what, um, we're unhappy with this club. And, you know, we want to create a, an organization kind of like it, but a little bit different. So, you, you know, um, you know, you create a, like another, another club, right? So that, I don't know, you've got stats club and, um, and let's say there's a rift and stats club and they say, you know what, we're going to change stats club and we're going to create stats club two, right? The new stats club. Okay. But <laughs> if you copy over the, um, the person who's president, okay, and, and ends up the, the same person as president of both clubs, then, then you know, that's basically what we have, right? Um, rather than defining a new kind of, uh, um, you know, a new set of officers or whatever at the new club, you, you end up copying over the same person, you know, it's the same person, right? Okay. And so that's basically what we have here. Okay. And so we don't actually want that. We want to create a deep copy where we're going to create a copy of that position. So you'll have, you know, the new club will have a new president, a new vice president and whatever, um, but it's not going to be the same person. It's going to be, you know, a new instance of, you know, officer president and, and, um, and you can put in, a, you know, whoever you like there. Okay. Uh, question says, when copying one object using copy and we have objects within the object, the reference to those objects get copied. Right, so we're not copying the objects, just the reference. Yeah, so you're copying the reference, which is look, um, which is pointing to this point object at this location in memory. Okay, so so when we use a copy, it creates a copy of the object and the references. Okay, but it doesn't make copies of the objects uh, embedded inside. Right, so if I change the location of box corner, it used to be at the origin zero zero. If I change it to one, then the location of box two's corner also changes, okay? And that might not be the behavior you want, okay? So what we have to do is, so, so box height and box two height, um, we can change those. those. Those objects are different, right? So here I can reassign box height to 200 and box height's 200 and box two height um, is gonna remain 400. That doesn't change um, because box two is a, is a copy of box, but the underlying object of the corner pointing to the same thing. So if you want a, um, if you want the embedded objects, in this case, the corner, the point located at corner to be copied, you have to use deep copy, okay? Deep copy. And I think we had an example of copy and deep copy as far as like uh, list objects embedded inside of other list objects and things like that. And it's, it's kind of like, it's basically the same idea here, except it's just for objects embedded inside of other objects. And so here we're going to create a third box, box three, that's going to be a deep copy of box. Okay. And so box three is a copy of box and the object at box three corner, the point object at box three corner, is different from the object at um, the point object at box dot corner. Okay, whereas box two was just a, a shallow copy, and so that object um, ended up being the same. So this is this is different, and therefore, if I change the uh, the coordinate of box dot coordinate, you know, box dot corner dot x to something else, box three dot corner, it's an entirely different point that's going to be unaffected there. So so just kind of. Keep that in mind as far as deep copies, if you're going to make copies of objects. Okay, so, you know, a lot of times we want to um, create some kind of function that's going to interact with objects and classes. And, uh, and so to kind of um, lead us through this, we're going to create um, another class called time, okay? And the time is going to be an object and it's going to represent uh, you know, the time of the day, and it's gonna have three attributes, the hour, the minute, and the second, okay? And so here we're gonna say, um, we've got a time 11.59 and 30 seconds, all right? So here we create um, just one instance of the time, okay? And I hope, I hope it's not too confusing that my instance is lowercase time and the class name is capital, 
time. Okay. And here we got time.hour, time.minute, time.second. And again, right now, as we've defined class time, there's no gatekeeper. All, the only thing inside my class definition is just this document string, which really does nothing <laughs> other than just give us, the programmer, some, some information about the object. Okay. But as far as the Python language goes, this does nothing. It has no behaviors. It has no, no guardian checks or anything like that. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to define a method, uh, or right now, I'm going to just start off by defining a function. It's not a method. It's just defining a function that's going to take the hour, the minute, and the second, and it's going to, um, um, you know, kind of print it with a um, kind of the, in, in two digits. Okay. So it's going to take, you know, whatever this is, and, uh, and it'll, It'll turn it into two digits. It's separated by colons. Okay, so we have percent dot two d, and that's going to say take whatever number it is and print out basically two digits of it. Okay, so here if I say print time on the time, we're going to get eleven fifty nine thirty separated by colons here. Okay. Um, this is a. Uh, a bit of an aside, but it, it, it's important to kind of um, note this. And so you have what's known as a pure function and you have a modifier, okay? And, and both of these functions have a purpose. If you're coming from R, most of R deals only with pure functions, meaning it takes in an object or takes in some values and it does stuff with them and it returns entirely new objects, okay? And it has, it has no effect, generally it has no effect on the arguments or the objects that you put into that function um, other than returning a brand new value, okay? So that's, that's what we call a pure function. Stuff comes in and it returns something entirely new out, okay? Um, and so, um, so a pure function doesn't modify any kind of objects passed to it, uh, it just returns a value, all right? And there's, um, <laughs> There's when you when you write code, okay, and this this is taken from the textbook, and um, and the textbook author you know wants to give you some strategies regarding you know how to write complicated um, scripts and stuff like that, and a, kind of a common thing is basically called prototype and patch, okay, which basically means start simple, and then add complexity. Just you you patch you take your thing and you just patch it. Um, incrementally by adding a little bit more complexity to your thing, right? And this is this is generally a good a good strategy, right? So here we're going to take a function, right? And so here we want to have a function that's going to take in two times. The function is called add time. We take time one and time two, and what it's going to do is it's going to return sum. Sum is a in, another time object, and basically we want to take two functions. We want to add some add the two times together and return whatever, you know, uh, whatever time it's going to be, right? So if we say, you know, you start an object, you, you know, start a movie at uh, 1130 in the morning, the movie lasts two hours and 12 minutes, what time is it going to be when you finish, right? And so we go, okay, if we start at 1130 and it's two hours and 12 minutes, uh, we're going to end at 142 or something like that. That's basically what we want to do. We want to just take time one, time two, and then add add the two times together, okay? And so I think we can already see things go wrong, but it's good to just start off, uh, start your functions off very simply. And here we're gonna just say, take the hours, add them together, take the minutes, add them together, take the seconds, add them together, right? And already we can start thinking like, okay, well, what happens if it you know goes over 60 and things like that? We're obviously gonna run into problems, but right now let's just start simple. Let's see if this, this works as defined. And then we can start patching it and start increasing complexity to kind of handle these, these cases where um, things don't quite work out the way we want, okay? Let me go ahead and give you the uh, second view quiz answer for today. Second view quiz answer today is B, B as in bear, B as in bear, okay? I'm, I'm gonna run out of time. We're not gonna finish this lecture today. We'll, we'll, we'll have to continue on Wednesday. But, um, but just kind of wanted to start here. Okay, so B as in bear, second view quiz answer. All right, let's keep, um, let's take a look, right? So we're gonna say, um, let's start at 9.45. Okay, and then we'll, um, 
we'll take uh, we'll do an activity that lasts one hour and 35 minutes. Okay. So if we add these two things together, what we're going to do nine plus one will give me 10 45 and 35 gives me 80. Okay, and uh, and the zero and the zero add together. So when we add them together, we get 108000. Okay, <laughs> uh, which is not a real time. You know that's that's 1120. So what we need to do is we need to um, fix this up. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll take the um, we'll take the two times, add the hours, take the two times, add the minutes, take the two times, and add the seconds. Okay. And, uh, and now we're going to just kind of check and we'll say, all right, if the seconds are over 60, then um, we're going to increment the minute by one, okay? And we'll take off 60 from the seconds, okay? And if the minutes are over 60, then we will um, subtract 60 from the minutes and increment the hour by one, okay? And then we'll return the sum, right? So we, we'll, uh, we start it off and we go, okay, well, how does this work, okay? And so now we'll take our two times, we'll say, you know, we started again at 945. The, the activity asked, lasts for an hour 35. When are we done? We're going to finish at 1120. Okay, uh, 1120. And that looks good. Okay. And so, so that was, um, that's a, an example of a pure function where uh, two things um, get added together. Uh, here, we're going to take a look at a modifier, which basically takes an object and it modifies it, right? So sometimes it's useful for the function to actually modify the object itself, that it, the, the object that comes in as a parameter rather than, um, um, rather than returning an entirely new thing, right? right? So functions that work this way, they're called modifiers. So here we're going to um, define a function called increment. It's gonna take a time object and then we're going to um, uh, add some kind of uh, activity or whatever, just some time in seconds, okay? So, you know, 10 minutes will be 600 seconds or something like that, okay? And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna do time.seconds, okay? We'll add the seconds to it, all right? And this seemed to work last time, so we'll do time.seconds, add 60. If it's over 60, then uh, we'll subtract 60 and we'll increment the minutes by one. And if the minutes go over 60 because of that, we'll subtract 60 from the minutes and we'll increase the hour by one, okay? Do we see any potentials for disaster here? Probably, okay. But let's go ahead and just see what happens. And then, you know, we, we try out with a few test cases and then we say, all right, this is, this is what needs to be fixed, right? Okay, so we'll say um, uh, 9.45. Let's go ahead and try out adding um, 90 seconds to it. 90 seconds, 90 seconds after 9.45 is 9.46 and 30 seconds. Okay, that looks good. All right, what if we have an activity that lasts uh, 185 seconds, three, three minutes and five seconds, okay? Well, the way we've written our function, we only say, well, if it goes over 60, subtract 60 and increment the minute by one, okay? So we added 185. Uh, to it, we subtract 60 and we increment the minute by uh, one here. So we're, you know, right now, okay, so keep in mind increment time has modified this, right? So we're adding um, three minutes and five seconds to 946 and 30 seconds. And, and this tells me, okay, well, now it's 947 and 155 seconds. Okay, so that, that, that's a problem. Okay, so, um, so it doesn't, it doesn't quite working, it doesn't quite work in that you know, it's not enough to just carry something over once. We have to do it until, you know, the time dot second, whatever this number is here, is less than 60, okay? Um, so one thing is we could <laughs> replace the if statements with while statements so that it'll keep incrementing the minute by one um, and subtract 60, um, but it's probably not going to be very efficient to do it that way. So we'll go ahead and do um, a little bit of modular division, okay? And what we'll do is um, we'll take the time and the seconds, whatever it is, it could be a really big number, maybe. Um, I mean, if it's too big and too many hours, you know, we could run into problems. But we'll, we'll take the number of seconds and do um, modular division. Div mod will return a tuple, which is basically, uh, you know, how many times 
60 get went into it and then the remainder, right? So if we give it something like 185, we will get three minutes and a remainder of five, okay? And then if, if the minutes ends up going over 60, then um, we can uh, div mod that and get hours and minutes, okay? Then we'll go ahead and add the seconds to second, add the minutes to minutes, add the hours to hours. And if the seconds go over 60, we will uh, subtract 60 and increment the minute by one. If the minutes go over 60, we'll subtract 60 from the minutes and increment the hour by one. Okay, so this is, again, we started off with a simple version of the function, the prototype. And then when we realize there's problems with it, we patch it by kind of expanding on that, right? Uh, do modifier functions only work with classes? Like if the parameters are just regular objects, how would we modify those in a function? So, so technically things like, um, the list object is a, an instance of the list class, and it has kind of a bunch of stuff, and you can write functions that will modify, you know, you, you pass it a list, you can have it modify that list uh, and things like that. So it, it depends, it depends on the objects that you pass into a function um, and whether that object is mutable, right? So things like list objects, you can, um, you can create a function that will take a list object and then modify the list object and return that list object or, or, or yeah, actually um, uh, do that, right? Uh, so here we're talking about modifying objects. And um, yeah, if you wanna modify an object, generally we, we wanna have it as a class. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole kind of, uh, Python has a whole bunch of different types of things where it, um, so, so yeah, you can define a function that will take, you know, the list and then, you know, kind of append it and things like that. Um, uh, you can't, um, but other objects like tuples, right? If your arguments are tuples or strings or just numeric values, those are immutable, right? And so that that's kind of why I think, I feel like I've been emphasizing the difference between immutable and mutable objects and things like that. And so basically in general, um, classes that you define will be mutable. And if you wanna have um, functions that modify them, uh, you, you can do that with, with mutable class definitions. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and try this out. We're gonna, um, so we've already, <laughs> so we've broken this thing. So we'll have to define a new instance of time. So here's, we're gonna define a new test time. We started off at 9.45 again, and then we'll try incrementing it by 185 seconds, which is three minutes and five seconds. And this time our function seems to work. It seems to have gone on to 948 and five seconds. <clears throat> so we can say, all right, let's do 4,800 seconds, which is one hour and 20 minutes. And, uh, and one hour and 20 minutes after 948, uh, indeed is 1108, uh, 1108 and five seconds. So we've successfully incremented our time. Okay. And this is a this function is a modifier because it's taking it, it's not returning a new object, it's, it's actually modifying the time here. Okay, so um, anything um, that can be done with a modifier can also be done with a pure function. Modifiers are convenient, but they can be hard to debug. And so, um, you know, depending on how, just kind of your design philosophy that you might choose. And, and you can switch design philosophies for one project to another project. Don't feel like you have to say, I am a pure function only person and I'm going to do all of my things as pure functions. You, you can choose to use modifiers um, when the situation calls for it. And, um, and so anyway, just keep that in mind. Generally, if you're working in R, almost R is like pure functions only, right? You have R6 classes and stuff like that, which, which does exist. Um, okay, let's see. Why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll we'll pause here for today. Uh, we'll we'll pick up on prototyping versus planning um, on Wednesday, and we'll uh, we'll take a look there. Okay. So right now we've just kind of introduced just some basic ideas of um, of classes. Right now we have barely even touched on any kind of um, real stuff with uh, object oriented things in, in Python. Uh, it, it's a it's a fairly deep uh, and complex topic that um, you know I think is worth uh, a few lectures of material on it. 
But we'll go ahead and pause here for now and, uh, and we'll pick up uh, at this uh, slide on Wednesday. Okay, so we'll end here. Uh, let me give you your last view quiz answer. Last view quiz answer today is E. E as an elephant, E as an elephant. So last view quiz answer. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll end there and we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Have a good evening.